After losing to the Wizards in the play-in tournament, and aside from signing 3 and D wing Torrey Craig, Indiana didn't have the busiest offseason, leading many to believe they won't be much of a threat in 2022. But the Pacers' main option in 2019-20, TJ Warren, missed all of last year after having foot surgery. Combine Warren's return with the January pickup of a 20-point score in Karis LeVert, and the elite frontcourt combo of Sabonis and Turner will have a lot more support in 21-22. Stay tuned to see which seed the Pacers will be next year and for much more. What's happening, everyone? We're almost at 50K, so if you're enjoying these takes on the daily, tell a friend, neighbor, slash cousin about the channel, or if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Now into what you came here for. Last year, the Pacers were missing their breakout player from the bubble and overall 2019-20 leading scorer, TJ Warren. He was limited to just four games this past season, undergoing surgery to repair a stress fracture in his left foot. Not only did Warren make a name for himself in the regular season, trash-talking Jimmy Butler and breaking out into the Pacers' go-to guy, he carried over that production to the playoffs. Indiana was swept, but Warren still averaged 20 points on 47% shooting to go along with 2.3 steals per game. However, the Pacers' roster just didn't have enough perimeter defense, athleticism, and overall shot creating to challenge Miami. That playoff failure was a big time question mark, but we're gonna gloss over the 2021 season considering they didn't have TJ Warren and were also forced to integrate a focal point in Karis LeVert into the offense without a training camp. That leads us to present day. The Pacers signed Torrey Craig to a two year contract worth 10 million. Craig played for both the East and West champs last year, guaranteeing him a championship ring before the finals even started. In 52 games for the Bucks and Suns, Torrey had a 109.1 defensive rating, and given he played just 16 minutes per game, he didn't qualify, but that rating was .4 ahead of Kawhi Leonard for the best among all NBA small forwards. Playing with two championship contenders will do a lot for the 30-year-old's confidence, but Craig's deserved a situation where he could be a legit 20 to 30 minute player in the rotation. Indiana gives him that chance, Craig's a below average offensive player, which is why he's the perfect fit for the Pacers, who have a ton of high volume scores like Brogdon, Levert, Warren, and Sabonis. But Indiana's one major issue is defense, an end of the floor where other than their backbone and Miles Turner, they don't have a ton of valuable players. But after how he helped neutralize Paul George in the conference finals last year, and the defensive reputation he developed when he was in Denver, Torrey Craig now has a chance to change the identity of the Pacers' defense. Last year, under coach Nate Bjorgren, the Pacers finished 25th among teams in points allowed, and the reason why it's so crucial they develop a defensive identity is because other than that deficiency, the team's playing style and roster are built for the modern NBA. The team has an abundance of overpowering forwards who can get it done down low and from the outside occasionally, along with electric guards who are speedy and can create offense in a blur. Quickly flashing back to the bubble, after a 45-win season, the two-time All-Star Sabonis and the two-time NBA Blocks leader in Miles Turner were swept in the first round to the eventual East champions. In the seeding games, the Pacers went 6-2 and, and seemed to be headed towards at least a conference semifinals appearance but the Dragon led the Heat with 23 point per game series averages, and six Miami players averaged at least 10 points per game. It wasn't one player going off or a team playing whoever offense on a player like the Nets played whoever offense on Evan Fournier last year. This was everyone on the floor letting their matchup go off and failing to make the proper defensive adjustments throughout that series. So they let go of Nate McMillan, now they've let go of Nate Bjorgren. Rick Carlisle's not much of a defensive coach, however, throughout his tenure in Dallas, which included a championship win and development of one of the better young players in the league, he proved that he's a brilliant offensive mind. So it'll be interesting to see how Carlisle develops the young talent in Indiana. In addition to Torrey Craig, wing players with long wingspans and who've gained solid experience despite being young players that the Pacers have on their team, 
are Justin Holliday and O'Shea Brissett. Fellow Canadian and former Raptor O'Shea Brissett came up clutch with 23 points and three triples in the Pacers' first play-in game. Brissett signed two 10-day contracts in April and played damn well for the Pacers in 21 games. Against the coach Nick Nurse that kept him in the G League and on the bench for years, Brissett dropped 31 points, grabbed 10 rebounds, making 10 of his 16 field goals. Who knows what a full season in the silver and blue could do for O'Shea and the Pacers. Meanwhile, the 32-year-old Justin Holliday needs to provide internal competition to Brissett, Warren, and Craig, because for the 30 minutes he got last year, 10 points on 41% shooting isn't going to cut it next season. Holiday's decent, but his inconsistencies could get him overtaken in the rotation by O'Shea and Craig. The X factor for the Pacers has to be Karis LeVert. The last time Indiana got to the playoffs when their core was fully healthy, Victor Oladipo was playing LeVert's role, and Vic shot just 30% from the field and 28% from three-point range. But next to Warren when the season tips off, LeVert being that second shot creator on the perimeter will be intriguing to see. So before predicting where the Pacers will finish in 2022, we gotta talk about the Pacers' most valuable player. The 6'11", 240-pound center DeMontis Sabonis has taken over as the face of the Pacers franchise since coming over in the Paul George trade. Bjorgren's defense as a whole was a complete disaster and Sabonis was often left in the middle of it. Some of the blame definitely falls on the defensive scheme, but until Sabonis cleans up his defensive struggles, he'll always be a liability on that end. He's got no struggles on the other end though. Sabonis recorded double digit points and rebounds in 16 straight contests to open the 2020-21 campaign, the longest streak in team history. He also ranked fourth in the NBA in rebounding and set a franchise record with nine triple doubles. However, while Sabonis is an excellent player, he's not at the level of other players across the league that can carry a team on their own. He shouldn't be expected to be the top dog each night or to lead a team to a high seed in the playoffs by himself. So taking that into account, which seed will the Pacers be next year? Let's say Sabonis becomes more of a three-point weapon, develops another one or two go-to moves in his bag, and makes the leap from a star to a superstar. With the support he has around him, we could be looking at a top five seed if that happens. Two seasons ago in 2018-19, Malcolm Brogdon was a 50-40-90 player. If Brogdon and Warren play up to their capabilities and stay on the floor, the 2022 spring could be special for fans in Indianapolis. Those are the reasons you shouldn't sleep on the Pacers in this upcoming regular season, but if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. If you agree, let me know in the comments. Hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.